Okay. Also, uh, class, uh, can you can you hear me? One of you, please confirm it, and I want to start the class. Yes, sir. Okay. Today we are going to talk about the ideas, ideas of muse. I hope you got the PDF copy. And in this in this in these things, I am going to discuss the influence in an ancient time of the of those muse. And uh, one, one of the major muses were uh, was Calliope. So I'm going to discuss the role of Calliope as well. And and um, the, we would also discuss the muse in painting. Um, sometimes we are going to discuss that uh, a, a text of Michael Modushudan Dutt. So we are going to also talk about the muse in Bangla literature. And uh, uh, another thing I'm going to discuss today, the meaning meaning of muse today and its effect to the social media. And finally, we are going to discuss the text and Milton's invocation to his muse. And I'm going to discuss as well that what is what is invocation and how did how did John Milton address those muse? Okay, students are still coming. Okay. okay. Can you can you see the picture? Here we get nine muses in ancient same time. Muses, they they have different roles, but this painting is portrayed. But uh, Guilio Romano, Guilio Romano, okay, this is this is the merry making scene of muses. They are dancing, they are singing, or something like that. And like, make no mistake, the costume here, the costume is not it's it's not Greek costume. It's a Roman costume, and so you may understand. Though the idea is Greek, but Roman, Roman blindly followed those Greek culture and Greek study. Here, here that is, this is the larger picture. We are going to discuss it in details. Can you see? Okay. Another another picture. These are different types of version. This one, this one is this one is far better than these two. Okay, this is another one, and we are going to discuss a little bit about this this muse. Her name is. Calliope, Calliope, and why I'm going to discuss this news particularly, I'm going to talk about it later. Okay, there are nine muses. This is the, these are nine muses. That is the domain in which, in which topic they contribute. Calliope, I choose Calliope because she deals with epic poetry make no mistake she deals with epic poetry as john milton john milton's paradise is a great epic so that, that's why we are going to talk about this calliope and here there is one thing you are going to get that is emblem emblem means symbol or symbolic or meaning or badge badge usually we wear how we are going to understand them this emblem will pass Mm, we are going to uh, get those Thalia, but in comedy, Urania in astronomy, as John Milton also discussed a great deal in astronomy in Paradise Lost because of the design, the design of the design of hell, the design of heaven, God's master care. Yeah, that's why he used to follow used to follow all those things, and that's why we are going to talk in later classes about Irania because he talked about astronomy and John Milton's astronomy is definitely Ptolemic. Okay, We're going to the next slide. This is Calliope. Her spelling is also exact like this and her name we also get in Theogony. Theogony, in Hesiod Theogony, what is What's theogony? It is written under <coughs> beneath, beneath the text here. But the thing is that theo, theo means God, 
goni means lineage or generation or genealogy so the thing is that theogony means the life study or genealogy of the gods so in theology we we find that calliope is the patron of epic poetry yes and one thing you have to know that when you are going to read greek text or greek mythology you would understand that theogony is the most authentic source in greek literature so that we may believe all those things okay so this is the calliope and look at the picture of calliope and she's thinking something that means brooding over i am thinking i am ready i'm ready to tell something new or i am going to inspire you so this picture is little bit different and this is this is fraswa bhez bhez fraswa bhez in this fraswa bhez you are going to also get the portrait of calio that's why this bhez is little bit important okay so we are going to the next slide okay have you read the bongo bhasha by michael modhusudan dot if you read that you would understand but why i why did i uh, choose this picture you have to understand there is a picture here the picture inside the picture it is john milton can you see clearly this is the picture of john milton and john milton um, and michael modhusudan dot was hugely influenced by john milton in his epic we find absolutely his ideas are miltonic his parts his parts was miltonic that's why the picture here is very much symbolic this is michael watson the in his sonnet bongo bhasha he said that shopne to go kul lokhi koye dila pore ore bacha matrikoshe ratoner raji ke bhikari dosha tobe keno tor aji when john uh, when michael modhusudan dot is was in england and he lost everything and he was he was going to going to prison for some time then he thought kulo lokhi kulo lokhi kul means in english prestige kul means in english prestige or or, or we say lineage so the thing is that kulo lokhi the lakshmi of prestige the lakshmi of prestige kulo lokhi this is the muse of michael modhusudan dot michael modhusudan dot muse is kulo lokhi suddenly kulo lokhi let michael modhusudan dot understand that why are you in abroad ja phiri oggan tu ja phiri ghore that means go to india again go to your country go to your bengal go to jashor something like that what are you doing here that means muse is inspiration what do you do what do you do with muse suppose i am thinking thinking about thinking thinking to write a poem or something like that literary text and i am inspired by something that is my muse so here the muse of michael modhusudan dot is kulo lokhi palilam agya sukha pailam kale matribhasha rupe matribhasha rupe khoni punno moni jale so the thing is that it, it is his mother tongue okay so this is this is michael modhusudan's michael modhusudan's um, muse and now we are going to later discuss who is the muse of john milton okay modern meaning of muse in, in modern time muse is artistic and its artistic inspiration i, I just i have just told you is the source of is the source of artistic inspiration make no mistake often filmmakers talk about a certain actor being a muse these are the thing you are going to read a bit later and if you want to read more searching uh, search it in, in the internet and you are going to find those things in details okay so this is pablo picasso and picasso is one of the greatest painters of the world and he had many muses and especially uh, look here the word as a noun it means a person especially woman if the artist 
or the author is man, definitely muse would be woman. Sometimes might be man. Okay, but the muse is woman. And here we are going to get six ladies. Six ladies and Dora Mar is the most important one. Six ladies who, who, who shaped time to time, who helped time to time Pablo Picasso to be Pablo Picasso because they are the muses of Pablo Picasso. These are the modern meaning you can take in this way, but when you are going to write epic poetry or something like that, definitely these things are a little bit mythological so that we, we understand these types of things. Okay. Okay. Some uses with the word muse. Today, still these words are used in, in plenty. Try to understand the look at the, it is prefix muse, amuse, muse, bemuse, or the word museum, mused, or the famous word music. Those are closely connected with connected with the word muse. I am going to give you a floor to ask question. If you have any question, so ask me. Or I am going to I am going to enter into the text of John Milton. If you have any question up to this portion, ask me. Oh, because we are going to discuss who is muse or what is muse we have to understand. So every poet, every poet or author has their own muse. So who is the muse of Michael Modeshudan? This is the thing I am going to discuss here. And because I am going to discuss the muse of John Milton and, and Michael Modeshudan was hugely, um, he was hugely influenced by John Milton, that is the, that is the thing. Hmm? That's why we have read. Okay, another thing we are going to read. Do you know who is this person? Who is the singer? Can anyone tell? Yes, sir. Uh, tell his name. John Legend. Yeah, John Legend. Thank you, Asmia. Okay, there is a great song. All of me loves all of you. Hmm? I, I hope you have heard the song. And here is the line you might find. You are my downfall. You are my muse. Try to understand. This is this is this is the social impact in pre, pre, present day of muse. So without muse, it is it is utterly impossible to write something. If you don't have any muse, if you don't have any inspiration to read or write, definitely you are not going to produce any any something new, new writings. So that's why he had he had the, he had the he had the lyric is that you are my muse. Okay, so um, you if you um, had the song, you would definitely love it. So up to this, we have discussed the ideas of muse, the influence of muse in ancient time, muse in painting, the role of Calio, muse in Bangla literature, or meaning of muse today, and its effects in social media as well. But still, and, and the, the thing is that with prefix and suffix, there are many words, but I have chosen only five important words so that you may understand and make it clear amuse bemuse you need you need to understand semantics of the word or the root root of the word so that you may understand the root of the word is muse muse that is the ancient muse in the way we use okay so we are going to discuss now um, milton's invocation okay then the question is that yes when the question who is the muse of John Milton. This is this this would this would be the central point of view of uh, this uh, this lecture is something like that. Uh, who is the muse of John Milton and how how did how did he invoke those things to the muse? If you have read um, P. B. Shelley's Ode to the West Wind, O oh, Wild West Wind, Thou Rest of Autumn Being. So when he was asking something, he is addressing something. Muse is the person who would help and who would hear, hear the poet and would, would try to help, help him or her. So this, but generally when we are discussing about the Greek muse, you would see that here is the, here is the Calliope who is the chief patron of epic poetry. 
but in in this figure we, we see that john milton is not is not looking towards any greek goddess anymore rather there is a common man uh, half, half naked and with the flag in his hand that means this is english flag the flag of england and the hand is raised that means this is the hand of rebel the hand of revolution or struggle or the hand of common people that means the difference we have to understand is that john milton's muse is not like the greek muse or he is not trying to invoke the way um, homer did the way uh, the way virgil did or dante or or tartiato tosso or, or master there are many master epic poets not like that or the conventional way he didn't follow that way rather he is trying to portray all those things the way he believed the way an englishman should believe so his his you have to understand his muse is not just inspiration his muse is his legacy what he believed his muse is vision the way he believed that is his muse okay so the thing i have written here in traditionally muse is the source of inspiration source of knowledge and the source of narration but in john milton it is inspiration and vision and the thing is that that this narration his narration is not just just like to, i am just telling the history no it's a political narration you have to understand his narration is political it has political meaning and so that all may understand what is all that understand what is the next step or next movement going to be in england as you know he was a, he was an ardent lover of oliver cromwell and he believed in democracy not other thing okay so now we are going to discuss what is invocation invocation is a kind of prayer from classic literature we might we might find this these things that um, in ancient ancient poets even even the uh, even the contemporary poets as well they address address this way address this way and, and the system of addressing is prayer and in his prayer he asks for help and to inspire and other many things these are the things of john milton in uh, pattern of invocation and here, here is the definition you would read later i hope okay uh, we are going to the next slide so we we are going to read paradise lost from um, uh, from the very beginning to the 75 lines so we are going to read the very important portion of of paradise lost first try to understand the of man's first disobedience first disobedience that means milton begins to talk with his muse and who is his muse definitely within four or five lines we are going to understand who is his muse the thing is that of man's first disobedience try to understand make no mistake man's that means his epic poem is starts his epic poem is starts with man not with other thing and the second entity we get here fruit so man brings another entity is called fruit and the and the and the product of man and fruit is disobedience yes that is milton for you one of the greatest um, master of uh, poetry and his disobedience try to understand man's and fruit and in the uh, disobedience is in the center of the sentence so make no mistakes definitely john milton is trying to talk about that disobedience and disobedience is in the center center of the sentence so you have to understand that the central point of view of paradise lost is disobedience and he say brought death into the world and oil our hope with loss of eden loss of eden loss of eden understand loss of eden means what is the meaning of loss of eden paradise lost loss of eden means paradise lost Hmm? Try to understand. Loss of Eden is paradise lost, and another thing he said that till one greater man restore us. 
till on greater man restore us greater man try to understand greater man here the greater man is jesus christ till on greater man restore us greater man means jesus christ and restore us that means with loss of eden this is paradise lost and till on greater man restore us this is the symbol of paradise regain this is the symbol of paradise regain wait a bit okay can you hear me yes sir yes sir okay the thing is that man's first disobedience or oh, we have read it okay so with loss of eden this loss of eden means paradise lost till on greater man restore us that this is the sign milton is giving us that definitely after this i am going to write paradise regain so this is the name of first epic paradise lost and this is the name of second epic sing heavenly muse now he talks about the muse sing heavenly muse that on secret top of oreb or sinai did inspire that shepherd yes that shepherd is moses so his his muse is the muse who inspired uh, prophet moses to write his 10 commandments hmm? so the thing is that here he discloses his but he is talked about heavenly muse but there is no muse whose name is heavenly muse that means this is the complete um, complete new muse introduced by john milton that shepherd shepherd make no mistake this is especially the prophets are called shepherd moses is called shepherd even jesus christ is called shepherd and some notes here if you going to read those things definitely you are going to so here here the we are going to get the mount oreb or mount sinai because he got all those things from from mountain okay we are going to the next slide okay i then invoke thy aid now john milton asks john milton asks to to the muse so that so that the muse help um, help him to write write this adventurous song to my adventurous song and he said that things unattempted yet in prose or rhyme that means the thing is that this is the challenge of this is the challenge of uh, john milton the things unattempted yet in prose or rhyme that means the, that is the thing i am going to write now i'm going to write is unattempted unattempted by anyone yet in prose or rhyme that means it is not attempted in prose or neither attempted in rhyme rhyme is poetry so he is asking asking for the help to the muse so there are two types of epic we may find one is epic of growth and number two is authentic epic look here epic of growth epic of growth is a kind of epic which is written by many many authors written by many authors or oral orally transmitted but authentic epic is written by single single poet make no mistake authentic epic is written by single poet and in uh, 7th century we had beol but though we have a great um, great controversy that whether it is um, english or not but it, that is their ancient literature like our georgia um, georgia pod in bangla but in um, in uh, 12th century the chronicle of britain it it, it was it was a um, compilation by by a priest his name is priest lyamon that is not also great text to read and another one is by john uh, lidgate it, its name is uh, troy book that is not also um, good good, uh, good epic to discuss but um, first major um, authentic epic we get uh, written by edwin spencer the fairy queen so that means this is the challenge against edwin spencer john milton is challenging 
um, challenging Edmund Spencer that I am going to that I am going to write something new, uh, definitely better than Fairy Queen, definitely better than Fairy Queen or something else. But I'm not uh, going to write like John Lidgate. I'm not going to write like Lyamon. But he also challenged the prose. That means he is also challenging Shakespeare as well. That means definitely I'm going to write something, something um, greater, greater than anyone. It might be masterpiece. Now he says, O priest, O, o sorry, o, o spirit. That means John Milton here is asking the, uh, asking the muse. He said, the spirit, thou from the past was present, because I am going to write the story, but you are the one who was present in the situation. So help me. So in the uh, before the last line, you say, I may assert eternal providence I, and justify the ways of God. I may assert, I want to write the eternal providence. Providence means law. So here he also um, tells, the, tells the muse that I am going to write the eternal providence, eternal law, and I am going to show how did God justify the ways of God to men. That means if God expelled Adam, uh, expel Adam and Eve. Did he did he uh, did he justify with man? And I am going to definitely discuss the thing. That is the thing John Milton wanted to say to the muse. Oh, another thing is that we are going to get here. Look at the word here. God. It is it is capitalized. The G is capitalized. And here we are um, going to get the ideas of God. Okay. There are many things you are going to get. That is atheism, agnosticism, and John Milton is uh, trying to portray that is theism, theism, and you are going to get thing also later. Okay. Hmm. Say first. Now he is asking to muse. Say first for heaven hides nothing from thy book. So in heaven that what is happening nothing hides from your view so now i want to ask whether you have um, my first question is that that say first what cause moved our grandparents so my first point is that why did why did they expel from the from the heaven and another question he's asking who first seduced them to foul revolt the infernal serpent yes infernal serpent here you are going to get the thing is that um, adam eve the serpent and the garden of eden the tree of knowledge these are the ancient as the book of genesis that means the source john milton got here or taken from the book of genesis so he is asking why did they were moved and second question is asking who first seduced them she does them that means they were misled okay and, and for this reason what time his pride had cast him out of heaven he heard that he is satan so the thing is that john wilson is another uh, question is asking and why 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 did uh, the satan also cast from the heaven with all his host with all his host because he has a well, we we talked about the uh, fallen angels of uh, rebel angels and um, by whose aid aspiring to set himself in glory above his peers peers means company he trusted to have equal the most high most high means god okay so that here john milton is asking um, this question to the news why he was expelled and who who were his company companions and raised impious or in heaven and they raised the impious or in heaven with vain attempt vain attempt means they knew they are not going to win this they are not going to win but still they fight why did they why did they fight that is the question him the almighty power okay to the with hideous ruin and combustion down to the bottomless perdition perdition means on kind of punishment so they were uh, they were defeated and they lost the battle and they are now in punishment and there they dwell in adamantine chains and penal fire they are they are now 
or what they are chained and they are in the midst of fire they are burning who does does means there in rk god this is explaining does defy the omnipotent two arms arms means weapons that means how did they dare to talk against god that is the thing john milton is asking okay but lay what happened to them lay vanquished lay vanquished they are defeated totally and rolling in the fiery gulf they they rolled into the fiery gulf and and the thing is that confounded that they thought they might win but they knew they cannot win when our expectation is not fulfilled it is called confounded reserved him to more wrath and now the thought both lost happiness and lasting pain now but his doom reserved him more wrath his his means satan the satan is lost um, the satan has lost the battle but he reserved his he, um, more wrath now he is thinking i lost the battle but definitely i am going to get take revenge against god okay now what he said that that mixed huge affliction and dismay mixed with obdurate pride and steadfast fast haste and he is too much stubborn with his pra, uh, pride and he has steadfast hate steadfast fast hate means we have a um, hate but that hate we cannot forget and this mal situation this mal situation waste and while this mal situation means gloomy and depressed and the thing is that that is the it, that this is this is the description of hell no light but rather okay rather uh, this small situation was okay no light but rather darkness visible well. this is this is a tremendous oxymoron the the situation of the hell is like that rather darkness visible i cannot see everything rather but darkness it's it's wonderful expression we are going to get lots of expression like this okay now where peace and rest can never dwell in in hell there is no sign of peace and hope never comes that comes to all such place eternal justice has appeared such place eternal justice has appeared so so if eternal justice is something like that eternal justice comes like this for the rebellious here their prison ordained in utter darkness and their portion said as far removed from god and light of heaven as from the center of thrice the utmost pole or oh, how unlike the place from the points they fell so the thing is that so john milton's invocation starts like this that we are here um tell me the story of um, that satan who who seduced our parents and now tell me in what in which condition they are living they are in hell and what kind of hell it is it is it is filled with fire it is filled with perdition it is filled with eternal punishment so the thing the thing john milton starts with shocking imagery the imagery of punishment the imagery of of tormentation so the that is how he asked something different news he didn't ask calio to help him rather he asked something new muse or heavenly muse who had seen hell who had seen heaven so this is this capacity is beyond any other any other greek muses that's why he tried to introduce something new muse and he invoked 